lay down. You could use the, and these are just suggestions, so you don't have to. You could use a bolster for the backs of your legs. You've got a blanket if you want to cover yourself. You have an eye pillow, um, unless you don't like lavender. So get yourself really nice and cozy. Use whatever you've got available at home for you, Jane. Cushions, blankets, pillows. Just take your time. And perhaps think about closing your eyes or softening your gaze. And maybe you take a nice deep breath in through the nose and just let it come out of the mouth. Oh, a little like that. Oh. So almost uh, imagining and encouraging with our exhales that we release our day, our week, whatever we need to. So if you are new to the space or to this practice, then I'm Karina and this is Yin Yoga. If you're new to Yin Yoga, don't worry. I will kind of uh, give you little snippets of information about it along the way. It's very much a practice of feeling into your body, into your breath, into the shapes, as opposed to worrying about what it might look like. You might even find that actually you spend most of the practice just with your eyes closed, because that way it can really kind of help you to get into your body, bring awareness inwards towards you, as opposed to how we spend maybe quite a lot of our time with our awareness outwards. And we're gonna start with a short breathing practice that I'm working on in most of my classes um, this month. It's a three-part breath, sometimes called Durga Pranayama. So Pranayama is prana, life force, breath, ayama, freedom, expansion of breath. And it's a great practice whether you are a beginner, whether you're a regular practitioner, it can just help you to arrive. It can really help to calm the nervous system, help you to ground and relax. Going to bring the hands onto the belly. Try not to interlace the fingers. So try to just have perhaps the edges of the middle fingers touching. So you might need to take your elbows out. And as you breathe into the belly, and we're almost kind of visualizing that we are breathing right down into the belly, you'll feel the belly rise and expand. Perhaps the fingers will lift and almost come apart. As you breathe out, you'll feel this sense of drawing inwards and downwards, and the fingers might come together. So just be with that belly breath, just for a couple more breaths. Let's start to slide the hands up and out a little bit. So it's like each hand is cupping each side of the ribs. So you wanna take your elbows maybe a little bit wider.
and experience the inhale and exhale here. So what does it feel like as you breathe in? What does it feel like as you breathe out? Breathe in through nose if you can. Breathe out through nose or through mouth. You might find in a yin or a more relaxed practice that your exhales are a little bit longer. So it's really just a practice of releasing, surrendering. And then finally for our third part of breath, slide the hands up and over the chest and the breasts and come into the upper chest. And just experience what is there for you. So I can only ever really describe my own experience, what I'm feeling in body, in breath, in mind. And of course, I understand the anatomical work of the body, the skeletal system, all of these things, but I can't understand fully your personal experience. That's for you. And it will be different to someone else's, and that's fine. So take the hands now to where you felt you had the most connection or sensation with your breath. This, it's not a trick question. This is just about you thinking, where did I feel the most? What was the connection? And usually that is belly or rib cage. So chest breath tends to be shorter, sharper. Don't linger on the memory, but if you can think of a time where perhaps you have been anxious, stressed, if you're a little bit panicked, then your breath becomes short, more like a panting like a breath. And that moves up into the chest, the shoulders, the jaw, the face. When we're in sympathetic nervous system, so when everything is starting to be calmer, then the breath is more expansive and is further down in the body. And breath and yoga can take some time to get used to. So don't worry if you are kind of experiencing a bit of challenge with the breath. Breath is a great guide in a yin yoga practice, but also can be something that you come back to outside of the yoga practice. If your mind is busy and just starts to drift away at any point, come back to a fresh inhale, a fresh breath, air, energy. And then release. Breath, energy, air, thoughts, anything that's stale and served its purpose. So don't be kind of afraid of breathing loudly in the practice, of sighing, anything like that. And, you know, there's different dynamics to this practice. You might find that there is some challenge in a physical sense. You might find there is some challenge in a mental or emotional sense, but you are in a welcome space. So now just starting to bring a little bit of movement into your face. So checking that you're not clenching the teeth or furrowing the brow. And then start to roll the head really gently from side to side. So you might even tie this with the breath or you might not as we start to move awareness down into the neck. Bring the head back to center. And let's start to move awareness down the arms into the tips of the fingers as we wiggle the fingers, roll the wrists. Maybe we have a little stretch out of the upper body. So go with intuition here as well and what you feel 
is nice for you. Let this work its way down the body as well. So perhaps we point the toes, we flex the feet. Absolutely normal if you find yourself yawning. So we could all do with more rest. We probably all don't spend enough time just being, grounding. And then let's bring the knees in towards us, catch hold of knees, shins, thighs, clothes, whatever works. You might have a little roll from side to side, or you might just be holding the knees in towards you. And pop the feet down onto the ground. Just kick your bolster away for now if you had it behind the knees. Feet to the earth. So we're going to bring the arms overhead. Place them as such that the backs of the arms can touch the earth. And then just explore whether it might be the case that you can catch hold of opposite hands, opposite wrists, opposite elbows, but still allow the backs of the arms to touch the earth. And we're gonna take upper body, and you might need to lift and shuffle, you might be able to slide, and slide it over to your right hand side. So lower body doesn't move. It's like we're creating a curve with this upper body. So feel into kind of where your edges of how far over feels comfortable for you to go. Both of the arms, back of the arms on the earth as best as they can be. So you've really kind of expanded into one side of the body and compressed into the other. You could keep the feet onto the ground, so that's offering you a little bit of support. Or you might extend the legs down onto the mat. That could be okay there. Or you might start to slide or creep the legs down to bottom right. So you create this kind of banana shape. If you wish, you could cross the ankles. So it might be you cross right over left or left over right. Don't kind of be afraid to just try out. If something feels like, mm, not sure, you don't have to be sure why you don't like it. You might just go, mm, actually, I just think I'll go back a step. Nice deep breath in, breathe into that open side of the body. Breathe out. We're a minute into this shape already. So generally speaking, unless a shape is more active, then we will take three minutes in the shape. This is where yin differs to our practices like Hatha, Ashtanga, Ayenga, Yoga Flow, Vinyasa. We're very close to the earth. We're spending time. And many of those other practices are quite heavily focused on repetition, you know, especially Vinyasa. Ashtanga. Whilst we repeat shapes in yin yoga, we wouldn't necessarily repeat the same shape twice in a class. We'll go each side. And this is more about flexibility, about suppleness, about lengthening the body as opposed to strengthening the body. But that's why more active and more passive is the perfect combination. as best you can, just softening into the shape. There are definitely some more active shapes or some shapes within yin that you'll feel like, oh, this one's a bit trickier. But again, that's dependent on your body. 
last couple of breaths. Do really well. So there's something key about our yin practice is the way that we come out of our shapes. And, you know, certainly you might feel in some shapes like, oh, get me out of here. But if you can, just slowly move lower body back to centre. Then allow upper body to join. Slowly release the arms. So there might even be a little bit of tingle through the arms or sensation as you draw them back down. And then we're going to take a minute of rebound. So rebound perhaps starts just with a breath. And then it goes to wherever you feel is best for you. Maybe it's like, I just want to be still. Perhaps it's, I want to stretch. I want to have a little roll around. I just want to massage this part of my body. So what feels right for you? And you may well just think, oh, I don't actually know the answer. That's fine. So with more practice, we hope to, of course, create more connection, be able to listen to our body. So let's slowly start to take it over to the other side. So despite knowing where we're going with the shape, we don't want to rush it. Rushing will miss sensations. It's like, you know, just rushing through life and we kind of miss those little moments that are sometimes really important. So we'll take the arms overhead. We'll find what feels right with the touch of the grass. We'll start to lean it to the left. If you went to the left first and go right now, that's fine. And then take the lower body to join if we feel like on this side that that works. Once we feel like, okay, I'm in a position that I think it'll be all right for three minutes, you know, might be a little bit tough, but it's going to be okay. Nice deep breath in, breathe out. See if you can send waves of softness to the very tips of the fingers, toes, the very edges of the body. You might have the eyes closed. If you want to have the eyes open, that is completely up to you. My only invitation there would really be just to focus the gaze on one thing. So when we have the eyes open, often our eyes are darting around, our brain starts to go a little bit into overdrive. I want to see if we can just slow all of that down with you. And something that you can work with in a yin practice is an intention. So one of my yin teachers always used to say that yin is about attention and intention. So you might have an intention to relax, to stop judging yourself. could be anything that works for you. If the mind becomes distracted, sometimes the mind becomes bored in yin. You know, yin is one of my most favorite practices, but of course we experience the whole run of emotions and feelings. 
So if we become a little bit bored, maybe our intention just draws us back to why we're here. One more minute. Doing really well. deeper if you need to don't be afraid of oh, having a release of the breath and starting now to make your way back to center so slowly steadily And the same thing here, perhaps just ground for a breath. And then maybe you stay where you are. Maybe you decide there's a little bit of movement. It doesn't have to be a yoga position. You know, movement is movement. Wiggling, gently shaking, massaging. These are all really important things. And part of working with autumn is embodied movement and is touch. So one of the reasons behind that could be that maybe in summer we're more social, unless you're me, I'm never social. <laughs> the only time I'm social is when I'm here. But perhaps in summer we see more people, we're getting more touch, more hugs, more kind of tactileness. And then as we come into autumn, we start to go into a stage, a little bit of hibernation, not fully, unfortunately. And the community that we had out in the sunshine in the summer fades a little bit. So it's important that we honor ourselves with self-massage, but things like moisturizing your skin, that's gonna help in autumn because it's a season that, although it is wet in terms of rain, it has really dry qualities to it, dry wind. So we're gonna to start to make our way up now. Just roll yourself over to right or left, doesn't matter which way you go, whichever you feel called to. And take a couple of deep breaths there. If you feel that your energy levels are quite low and you actually just want to have a little snuggle up on your side, you could grab your blanket and just have a little snuggle here. If you feel that you're okay too, then just press into the earth, start to push yourself up nice and slowly and turn to meet me on your hands and knees. So just really take your time to get there. You could support your hands with the foam blocks, support your knees with a blanket if you wanted to. And we'll take maybe shoulders over the wrists, maybe hips over knees, but just feel into what is best for you. And start by just drifting the hips from one side to the other. So let the movement be as free as you can allow it to be. And then we'll start to take it into circles. So we come forwards and round a little bit and then back. It might be small circles. It might be more expressive here. You could absolutely have the eyes closed. Not forgetting that steady breath. Let's take it in opposite directions to circle or maybe some different kind of movement to explore. And then we're gonna come kind of forwards and backwards, but mainly it's up and down with the spine in fact. So as we breathe in, the belly drops, the heart just gently opens forwards, the chin lifts. 
As we breathe out, we arch the spine to the sky and look to the heart. Let's take a couple like that if it feels okay. And from here, keep the hands where they are, start to walk the knees backwards. So our hands are at about shoulder width apart. We drop the elbows to the earth. We let the seat come up nice and high. So knees and hips are roughly in line. You could just be where you are here, look to the earth or maybe relax your head down on a prop, keep the bum high, little compression through the spine. You may decide that you wanna slide the fingertips forwards, bring the forehead to the earth. And you'll feel that the heart starts to drift to the earth. So it can feel quite intense in your armpits. We are tipping the weight of your pelvis, which is quite heavy, up into the front of the body. So just be mindful. If you need to, you can have a bolster just kind of on the chest. So that will give you a little bit of support. You could cross the arms and hold on to opposite arms or elbows. Once you feel that you are in that position that may be a little bit of a challenge, there might be sensation, but it's okay. Nice deep breath in. Breathe out. And you are in charge. So if you decide that in one minute's time, this just isn't right for me, for whatever reason, just slowly start to walk your way back, come into tabletop and just have a little rest there. It can be hard to distinguish sometimes whether it's actually the mind just going, oh, no, you can't, you can't do that. Like, they, oh, this, this, like, this, this feelings here and you should just come out of that. Or whether, you know, it's necessary for us to move away from it. Halfway there. You can come out of the shape, give yourself a breather, and then see if you want to come back in. If you don't, that is fine. And remembering that everything is connected here. So when we're working through certain areas of the body, we also have to bear in mind that that impacts certain other areas of the one more minute here. So bear in mind that kind of thought of coming out of a shape really carefully, even if we're like, oh, that's strong. I just need to get out of this. Lift the gaze ever so slightly, draw the hands in towards you. Press through the hands and just come into tabletop. Ground, take a breath. And then where do you want to go from there? Is it that you just want to push back seat to heels? Take a little bit of time closer to the earth. Is it some more cat cow or wiggling of the hips? Maybe you want to come onto the knees and just sit with the spine long. 
they are just suggestions so try and listen into what you feel is best for you And then from there, we'll move into child's pose. So we'll take the knees a little bit wider. We're gonna try and be semi-active with upper body, but think more about extending than tension. So you might want your bolster. You could also use blocks. Seat comes to the heels and it will lift slightly, but we wanna try and not lift it too much. So we could start to bring our chest, our head down onto the bolster, reach the fingertips forward and spread the fingers, but without getting your shoulders to really rush up around the ears. So there's a difference between space and extension and then just causing tension within the body. You might wanna be on one side of the head or face. If it feels very intense at the tops of your feet, you could put a blanket just underneath the tops of the feet. If you feel like you need to fill the space between the heels and the bum, you could roll your blanket, you could put some blocks there. And if you feel like, oh, just, I don't really know, like I'm just not really sure about this, then let me know, give me a wave. If you actually would just prefer to lie on your back, come and lie on your back now and I can show you a recline version. So there are always options. Taking that nice deep breath in and out. Allowing front body just to start to sink down into the air. And autumn being the time of our lungs and our large intestine. So very much about welcoming in, if you think about lungs, their connection to respiration, but also about letting go as well. So, you know, secretion, excretion. And one of the simplest forms of that could just be the breath. So we breathe in this fresh air, fresh energy. Maybe we know it as prana, maybe we know it as chi, something else. And we breathe out what is stale. Whether that's just stale air, whether that's stale thoughts of the mind, whether we're focusing on breathing out any stagnation or staleness that could be in the body. Halfway there. We're also moving through the first autumn new moon. And a solar eclipse. So the solar eclipse, I don't believe is visible for us, but the energy is there. So much like the cyclical nature of the seasons, the lunar cycle is cyclical in nature. And our energy can wax and wane, just like the moon. That could be physical, that could be emotionally waxing and waning, mentally. And all of that is okay. Last couple of breaths.
Let's bring the hands to the earth and just slowly push into it as we start to lift ourselves up. So take your time. And find a seat that works for you. So it could be sliding the bolster in between the legs, taking a bit of a straddle. It might be that you want to sit on the bum and cross the legs or sit on some blocks. I'm just going to take the arms out a little bit wider and then bring right over left. So right outer elbow is towards left inner elbow. Here we could come and take hold of opposite shoulders and lift the elbows in line with the shoulders and we're gently squeezing and pressing. Another option could be that we cross the arms and we hold onto hands, we hold onto thumbs, we hold onto fingers, palms, whatever you feel right. But then from here, you might find here um, that lifting your elbows in line with your shoulders there feels like quite a lot. So this is what we would class as more active. So we're just gonna take two minutes on each side. You might feel as though it's pulling the scapular apart, your shoulder blades. You could close the eyes or gaze into the elbow crease. Be aware of your lower spine, your belly, your lower ribs. So you might have tipped the hips forward and flared the ribs a little bit, or you might have flared the back ribs. You wanna just have a nice long spine as best we can. Okay, we're lifting the elbows gently in line with the shoulders. A little squeeze and press. Take a nice deep breath in when it's there. And slowly as you breathe out, unravel. Let's just let the arms drop down by the side of the body. Feel the shoulders soften as they're heavy. Take a breath, ground. And maybe you want to stay there. Maybe you want to have a little rotate of the wrists and a click of the fingers. Some shoulder rolls up to you. Let's move to the other side. So we'll bring the arms up, take left over right. May not be the same story this time. Lifting elbows in line with shoulders, just gently pressing and squeezing the arms. Maybe you take a wrap and lift the elbows. Nice deep breath. Just over a minute to go. Keeping the spine nice and tall, particularly low spine. There is a natural dip in the low spine anyway, but rather than flaring forwards or backwards.
And this time as you exhale, just let the elbows drop a little bit and instead just embrace yourself. Tuck the chin into the chest, like you're giving yourself a nice hug. As you exhale, we're starting to unravel the arms, let them drop down the side of the body. Take a breath. And let's drop the right ear just gently over to right shoulder. So we're not pushing, forcing, just as much as feels okay. Roll the chin down towards the chest and then roll the left ear up and over to left shoulder. And as we breathe in, we bring the head back to center. And take a breath out. <sighs> so we're going to make our way down onto the earth. We're going to take our block with us. So just take one of your brick blocks. If you have got any lower spine issues or have had in the past, then maybe think about taking your flat block instead. Have a little sip of your drink if you've got one and you need it. Add any layers on if you need those. And I would have your blankets and things just close by. Because once we come down, we're not going to be coming back. Well, we are. It's made it sound like everyone's going to die. Would you lie down? We're all dead. So we never No, That's not what I've heard. <laughs> or I just morbid in the head. <laughs> Um, so nice and slowly, just come down onto back of body. We're going to have feet to the earth, knees to the sky. So that allows the whole of the spine, including low spine, to just settle there for a moment. Breathe that in. We'll have our block close to hand. We're going to take an optional, very sensitive back bend here. So we'll use the lowest level. We'll push down through the feet as we breathe in. We start to lift the hips to the sky. You might need to come onto the balls of the feet. Slide your block underneath the low part of your spine. So near your tailbone. If anyone is kind of feeling like, mm, that's not quite right, then let me know. So you want to be able here to just let the weight of the body just settle down into that block. A supported way of offering ourselves a back bend, a nice little opener for the heart. The chin and chest come towards each other. And you might open the palms up towards the sky, and just let the hands rest a little bit wider. And there are other options here. One could be that you start to extend the legs and you come to rest on the heels of the feet. So if you think, no, I can't be bothered, or oh, I so, so want to try that, that's fine. If you try it and you think, mm, actually, I'm not sure that's for me, then you could pop the feet back to the earth. Another option could be that you step the feet back to the ground. One at a time, you start to bring the knees in towards your chest and you lift the feet up towards the sky. If you're going there, you might turn the palms down to the ground. They offer you that little bit of support, almost like just stabilizing you. 
The legs don't have to be fully extended. You might find it helpful just to lift your tailbone and kind of tilt your hips in towards yourself a little bit. You could work on one leg at a time or both legs. And this is a kind of shape that could also be worked with up against a wall. Aha, Tanya is going there right now. <laughs> So it is something that is called legs up a wall. If you practice it up against a wall, what can also feel quite nice is if you have a sandbag or some kind of weight that is safe, you can put that on the soles of the feet and you get a nice little push down from the soles of the feet down the hamstrings into the back of the body. Really good for lymphatic drainage, very good for runners, swimmers, anyone who's on their feet quite a lot. And said to send energy into the upper body from the lower body, coming towards our higher energy centers. So intuition, connection. So our last few breaths here, just slowly beginning to pop the feet to the earth, push down through the feet, slip the hips, slide that block out, and let's place the block between the thighs or the knees as we let our spine come to the earth. Press down through the feet. We'll shuffle our hips over to the left and take our knees over to the right. So the block is there, is that little bit of support. Some people might find that helpful. Other people might find they don't want it there or they want it behind the right thigh or just underneath the right thigh. keeping the shoulder blades to the earth. So we still have a nice little openness to the chest and heart. You might have the palms down or the palms turned upwards. And we don't spend three minutes on each side here. This is just a nice little ending to our practice to unwind the spine. And then spend a minute each side. Just allow yourself to soften. Slowly start to send the knees back to center. Let the feet touch the earth. Take a breath, reground. And then drift over to the opposite side with a little shuffle and twist. Draw the knees back to center. If you've got a block in between them, just bring the knees in towards you. Take it out, place it down. 
feet to the earth, that <coughs> breath. And then what feels right for you here? So just before we head into Shavasana, our relaxation, do you need a stretch, a little wiggle? Does any part of the body just need a little rub or massage just to show it some appreciation and attention? And then slowly, just starting to slide yourself into Shavasana. So what does that mean for you? It could mean the arms and legs are extended. It could mean that you roll to the side of the body and snuggle up like you're in bed. It could mean that you have the feet still on the earth and let the knees knock in. Use anything that you wish around you and just take your time. If you feel unsure of comfort or support, then let me know. Just give me a wave. And once you get to the position that you think is right for you to relax, take a nice deep breath. Oh, oh lovely. And we're going to take just a short scan of the body. And as we move our awareness around the body. Just an invitation for each part of that body area or space to relax, to soften, to give in to rest. The soles of the feet, the tips of the toes, the heels, the ankles, the lower legs, the kneecaps and the backs of the knees, the upper legs, the glutes, the hips, the side body, the spine softening to the earth, The shoulder blades, the shoulders, the upper arms, the elbows, lower arms, wrists, the back of the hands, the palms of the hands, the fingers and thumbs. the back of the head, the features of the face, the jawline, the throat, all the way down the front of the body until we return to our breath at the belly. And we could hold our awareness through relaxation, just gently at the breath, if that feels right for us. We could come back to our intention, or we could remind ourselves that we are exactly where we're meant to be. Resting, allowing everything from our practice to just nourish us. Body, breath, mind.
Take a nice deep breath. <sighs> and start to very gently just expand your awareness to the edges of your body. Perhaps the edges of the room. And gently out into the world but knowing for these next few moments you're cosy just as you are savour that cosiness perhaps that calm that you've hopefully found as you keep the eyes closed maybe and just start to bring a little bit of movement into the face, the neck, the fingers, the toes. Maybe that expands into a bit of a stretch or a roll. And then just lull yourself over onto the side that feels right for you, like you are snuggling up in bed. You might keep the eyes closed or have a soft gaze here as you push yourself up nice and slowly. So you can bring the hands to the heart. Sit nice and tall. And we see our practice just with a single chant of Om, the universal sound. So you don't have to do Om, you could hum. It's more about the vibration than it is about the singing, let's say. So we take a breath in in a moment and as we breathe out, inhale. Breathe in, breathe out, gently take a bow, chin to chest. Thank yourself, your body, breath, mind. We thank each other, and of course, I bow to you. Thank you for trusting me. Me light and dark in me honors the light and dark within you. Namaste. Namaste. Okay.